Hello and welcome. My name is Tony and I'm here with the Everyday Counts program. And we have an hour together for yoga today. I have a block with me. Um, this can easily be substituted with a firm book with a towel around it or anything you have handy. A pillow would be great. Tonight also have for the um, end of the practice a bolster. Now this can also be substituted with um, a couple of firm pillows. Uh, this one's circular so you can roll a couple of beach towels together. Um, whatever you have handy. So that's for the end of the practice. I'm going to shoot that off to the side <laughs> and I'm going to sit up on this as we come to stillness at the beginning of our practice. So settling in and I'm also going to apologize because we have um, some work going on next door. So that may, um, you may hear that. So um, part of the practice today. So settling into wherever you are. Take a big breath in when you're ready. Exhale it out and release. Uh -huh. And notice that support underneath you. Allow yourself to be held by that support as you give yourself permission to be here practicing. Notice if there's tension present, tightness, discomfort, and do what you can to ease that. And tune inwards and notice how you're feeling today. Notice if there's a lot on your mind. And notice how your body feels. Notice what your energy levels are like. And notice your breath. Inviting breath in and out through the nose if that's comfortable for you. If it's not, then no big deal. Today we're going to be talking about stabilization, so for that we need a steady, stable breath. So starting to expand the breath on the inhale and the exhale in your own time and way. And once you have the rhythm that feels good to you, then we're going to stabilize that by smoothing the breath out. Noticing if there's anything you can do by shifting and changing your body for you physically to feel more stable. as we stabilize and steady the breath and our body. Notice how that feels. To start stabilizing through your body and the breath together. And what that means for you what it means for you to stabilize through your breath, through your body, <clears throat> and how that changes things. Rooting to rise and noticing how that feels. So 
steady, stable breath, and as much stability as you can within your body. And stability is not to be mistaken with rigidity. Stability is feeling stable within movement. I'm going to be playing a little bit with that. Considering drawing awareness down into that stabilizing force underneath us, that's that stability, pushing down into that and finding stabilization as it rebounds up through the body. Taking the palms out on the inhale from the elbows, coming up on the exhale, turning the palms down. And we've got this stable breath. We're rooting down through our support to reach up from there. And the option is here to start to move from the shoulders rather than the elbows. Noticing how that feels. We have movement going on, but keeping that stability within the breath, within the body. I'm going to leave that left hand down and start to move from the right, inhaling up overhead and all the way down, taking it to the left, flowing from side to side, but coming from that stability of our foundation of the body and the breath, noticing if there are different parts of the movement that feel less stable than others and see what it is that you can do to allow that to become a little more stable even if the movement isn't quite so big and so the movement is controlled the breath is stable and that's reflected within the movement option to stay over to one side three breaths making any adjustments accommodations that feel good for you and then we'll go over to the other side three breaths stillness or movement your choice And then we're coming all the way up from there. Rolling through the shoulders. Once again, our foundation and our stability underneath us. From that, we draw that up through the body, stable, steady breath. Always coming back to the sense of stability within us. And from here, we're going to take it over onto hands and knees. So any softness you might need underneath you, any blankets underneath the knees, go ahead. Once again, root into our foundation. And from there, drawing up through the lower belly, the shoulder blades reach up. So we have the stability within us, underneath us, and we draw that up through the body. Cat and cow here on the inhale, the belly comes down, we lift the gaze. On the exhale, we're rounding and rolling through the spine. Keep it small to start with. And then take it into the neck, lifting the gaze on the inhale, exhale. We can tuck that chin and towards our chest gaze comes where it lands or you can have your eyes soft or closed so we have stability and we have the ability to flow from that stability the breath is stable steady as are the movements
then coming back to center when you feel ready. From here, drawing the knees closer in towards each other and stepping back with the right leg, toes to the floor. Once again, stabilizing from the foundation up through the body and rolling forward and back, patting that left knee if you need to. Mm -hmm. And coming back to center. From here, we're going to draw the knee in, but not land it down. Inhale, we're going to open up through the hip. Exhale, down. Inhale, toes come to the floor behind us. Exhale, back. Inhaling and inhaling. And the option is to lift up through the leg as we shoot it back behind us, finding stability, inhaling as the leg comes up. So it's coming out to the side and back behind us, finding stability within that flow with in the breath. One more. And drawing the knee all the way back. Any movement you need to release tension through your body, go ahead. Stabilize the foundation and stabilize the breath. Same thing, other side, patting the right knee, inhaling the left knee comes out. Coming to the other side. Left leg comes back, toes to the floor. We're going to roll that forward and back. Always coming down to forearms if that feels better for you. Stable breath. And then coming to stillness, drawing the left knee in, but it's hovering. Pad the right knee if you need to. Inhaling, left knee comes out towards the side. And then we're tapping the toes back behind us, a long leg. Inhaling, exhaling, the knee draws in. Inhaling, extending, exhaling in. Steady the breath. And the option is here to hover the toes hip height. Inhaling and inhaling. So we have stability within the flow of the movement, stability in the breath, resting whenever you need to. One more full movement. And bringing the knee back down. Any movement you need to soften any tension, go ahead. And from here, I'm going to draw that right foot forward. Hands come to the inside of the right foot. And you can heel toe the right foot off towards the side, patting the left knee as you need to. From here, rocking forward and back through the hips. And if you have support underneath you that brings you up a little higher because that feels good for you, go ahead. If taking the back knee back behind you feels good, 
then do that too. Make this your own. And as you bring the hips back, the option is to lift the ball of the right foot. Now we've got flow, but we've got stability within that. The breath steady, we've got our foundation as steady as we can. Always adjusting, adapting, anything you need to for your body. Next time that right foot comes forward, it's going to stay or draw it back in line with you feeling stable. Hands come up to support. We're going to come all the way up, adjusting your foundation, root down into that support underneath you and lift from there. stable breath. And what is it here that could help you stabilize more? Is a wider stance on that right foot better? Is softness under the left knee better? Is an untucked back foot better? You decide. We're here for three breaths and to challenge that stability option to soften the gaze or close the eyes. Steady the breath. Move from within that steadiness. Cultivating that stability within. Float the eyes open. We'll drift the hands back to the mat and take the right leg back. Any movement you need, go ahead. And then we're drawing the left foot forward. Patting the right knee, maybe drawing that right knee back, hands coming to the inside of that leg, or up on support that you need wherever it suits you, and we're rocking forward and back, flossing through the hips. There's no right and wrong here, it's about choosing what feels right for you. Option to pick up through the front ball of the foot, lengthening through the back of the left leg. And again, any shifting you need to, to allow this to feel comfortable for you or more easily accessible, you go ahead and change what it is that you need. Next time that foot comes forward, it stays, or you could draw it back to a place that it feels more stable. Option to stay here. Option to drift the hands up onto that leg, and here we come. Low lunge. Accommodate for yourself to feel more connected down to your foundation. Find the stability within you, whatever it is that you need to do here. Find the stableness of the breath, the steadiness of the breath. Find the steadiness of the gaze. The option is here to challenge that stability, soften the gaze as if you're um, looking through your eyelashes, squinting, or even close your eyes. Go inwards. You might even find a location in your body that feels the most stable. Put your awareness there as you breathe. Three breaths. Cultivating that steadiness within. Float the eyes open when you're ready. Hands come down to the inside of the foot. And then we're bringing that all the way round and back. Any movements you need to release tension, go ahead. 
And then from here, resting back into child's pose, your chosen child's pose, you can take support underneath those hips, even the bolster that we're using later. Any child's pose that you find is right for you. Knees wide, knees together, you get to choose. And then once you're down there, connect to the support underneath you and allow yourself to rest deeply into that foundation of stability. Steady the breath. Within the steadiness of the body and the breath, allow the mind to also find more stability here. Focusing on one thing, like the breath coming in and out. Close your eyes, soften your gaze, or take your gaze to one pinpoint. The more we find stability within all our senses and our awareness, we cultivate this sense of stability and stillness within. Resting there for as long as you like, or when you're ready, starting to make your way up, and I'll meet you standing. Finding that stability standing. So taking the feet at a comfortable distance apart for you, spreading the toes, getting connected downwards to that foundation, and then allowing that to drift up through the body, through the crown of the head, so you cultivate once again that stability from the ground up. Mountain pose, palms towards the front. Come back to that steadiness of breath. Inhaling and exhaling. Noticing if there's anything you can adjust in your body for you to feel more stable. Consider drawing the pelvic floor up just a little. Drawing the belly button in towards the spine just a little within the flow of breath. And notice how that changes things. From here, taking the hands towards the front of the legs. I'm going to turn to the side so you can see me. This is the inhale and the exhale. I'm just going to drop the hips back, knees bend. Push through the feet to inhale all the way up. Exhaling, coming back. From here, the option as we come back is to raise the arms up shoulder height and that's going to accommodate for us taking the seat back a little. Inhaling up, exhaling down. The idea is not to get as far down as we possibly can, but to bring that stability within the entire movement. Exhaling down, inhaling up. from the foundations up through the entire movement. Just like when we were in cat and cow. Notice where feels unstable in your body and see how you can bring stability to that area. Focus the gaze, focus the breath, Distribute your weight evenly on your feet and allow that to ripple up through your body. Option, next time you come down, we stay. Three breaths. Stable and steady. Pushing through the feet at the end of the exhale to inhale you up to center. Coming back, 
mountain pose. Stabilize the breath. From your foundation, stabilize your body in your own way. Maybe even coming to that location in your body that feels the most settled for you. Hands come to the hips. Feet come in towards each other and just by narrowing the stance, it starts to become more challenging. Root down to rise. Steady gaze, steady breath, mind focused on the breath coming in and out. Root into the left foot, bend the right knee. Connect down with the left sole of your foot. Hips facing forward, everything focused, drawing the knee out towards the side. Hips facing forward, knee comes out, not so much that we're drawing the hips with it. Heel can rest on top of the right or the left foot to the inside of the left ankle, toes to the floor, or foot resting to the shin of the left leg, foot and shin drawing in towards each other to create a sense of stability. Option to take that foot all the way up to the top of the leg, just not on the knee joint. Foot and leg push in towards each other to create stability. Your gaze is fixed, your breath is steady, and everything's coming together to bring stability. Hands to the hips, drawing in towards each other, you can take the hands to heart center, heels of the hands pushing gently towards each other once again to create stability, shoulders are soft. Arms come overhead, again palms in towards each other, elbows can be bent or you can interlace those hands and reach up. Inhaling and exhaling, find the stability within you, the gaze, the breath. From the foundation, draw that stability up through the body. If you fall out, no big deal, just come back. You've got three more breaths. The flow of the breath, the stability comes from within. When you're ready, drifting the hands down and the foot comes down too. Hula hoop through the hips, releasing tension and then coming back to the other side. We've already got our narrow stance and that might be enough right here. Fixing the gaze, smoothing the breath and steadying the mind to focus on the breath. Root through the right foot to bend through the left knee. Knee can come out, hips facing forward. Option to stay here, ball of the foot to the floor. You can um, connect the heel to the top of the right leg. Connect the heel to the inner right ankle, toes to the floor. Shin to foot or foot to shin and we're drawing in towards each other. Fix your gaze. Option to take that foot up to the inner leg, not the knee joint. Root through the right leg and draw that stability up. Find that connection to the stabilizer inside your body, the location that feels the most stable. Fix your gaze. Fix your breath and your mind is connected to that stabilization of the breath or the location within you that feels the most stable. Hands to hips drawing in, hands come towards each other in prayer, heels connect, arms can come overhead, 
You can shoot those fingertips up towards the sky any amount. If there's any other gesture that suits you better, go ahead. Three breaths wherever you are. Steady the gaze. Steady the breath, steady the mind. Last breath. Hands come down. Release the leg. Mountain pose. From your foundation, notice the place in your body that feels the most stable. Allow that stability to expand. Steady breath. Focus the mind. Your experience of stability is going to be different from the next person's. So get familiar with it yourself. We're going to come down and focus now on stabilizing through the pelvis, which is kind of the hinge of the body. We stabilize the pelvis. We stabilize through the entire body. It ripples without. And I'll meet you down on the floor, gather everything you need for relaxation. Continuing on our journey to stabilize and strengthen through the pelvis, have my bolster here. I'm going to take it back behind me and there's the option of a block or a pillow. So coming over to one side, I'm going to pick a mirror and use on my right side for you, bringing the bolster, snuggling it in behind me. So it's really resting against my spine and my pelvis. I'm gonna support my head with my hand, but the option is always to take a block, a book wrapped in a um, towel or a firm pillow, your choice. And we're resting on one side, if your hips and your ribs are already loud, please take softness underneath you. Knees and ankles resting over each other around about a 45 degree angle from your spine. <clears throat> Keeping the ankles towards each other and that bolster behind you to give you feedback on whether you're opening up through the pelvis the inhale is going to be lifting up through the knee, top knee, exhaling just as slowly down. So inhaling up, exhaling down. Using that bolster behind you to notice if you're opening up through the pelvis. So our hips are wanting to stay, or the pelvis is wanting to stay firm. You can even take your hands on that hip um, or on the top of the pelvis above the hip. And as the knee comes up and down, notice if the pelvis is shifting. If it is, just do a little less movement until the knee coming up and down keeps the pelvis and therefore the spine in one line. Working with that breath, inhaling and exhaling. And this is getting into the glute medius here, which is a muscle kind of around the back of the pelvis. It's one of <clears throat> the key stabilizing muscles of the pelvis, so this is very much strengthening it. If you're starting to feel like this is quite a lot of work, rest. Inhaling and exhaling, we've got another couple to go. And if it starts to feel like it's getting a little jagged, that means that glute medius is getting tired. Next time the knee comes down, we're going to rest. Take a big breath in. Exhale, release the muscles through the back of that pelvis. Mm -hmm. So from here, knees are going to stay towards each other. Again, pelvis is not moving. The inhale here is lifting up through the heel, through the ankle. And we're taking an internal rotation here from the hip, but the hip the pelvis itself is not moving. So again, hand to the top of the pelvis, 
inhaling the ankles coming up you'll feel the femur bone shift inwards but the pelvis is not moving if the pelvis starts to shift inwards and away from that bolster behind you you know you know you've done a little bit too much inhaling and exhaling steady and smooth that exhale that release of the ankle is just as important as the steady and smooth lift up you might notice the the tendency here to shift the pelvis inwards as the heel comes up but i um, invite you to stay with that neutral pelvis therefore the spine is neutral too Okay, we've got another couple here. Rest if you need to. And again, if you feel like everything's getting a little jumpy, that's because um, muscles are getting tired. And then on the exhale, we'll take that ankle down. Take a big breath in. Release tension through your body. Just snuggling that pelvis up. Uh, the pelvis, the bolster up to my pelvis. Okay, from here we're going to put those two together. And if you don't want to, you can go back to the previous modifications. So on the inhale, knee comes up. Again, that pelvis is um, stable and then the ankle comes up here. So there's that internal pivot. And then exhale, ankle, knee. So it's a little faster. So the inhale, knee, ankle exhale ankle knee and that's the movement the ankle is not coming further up than the hip so a lot of the time people are doing this if you can see your ankle above your hip then it's too high mm -hmm. take every other one rest when you need to We've got another three to go. And by now, there's a really good chance you're starting to feel into that glute medius. And after your last one, you're gonna come to rest. Nice. You can take that heel of your hand and massage into that glute medius if you like. Well, the option is here, and I'm going to just take my head down to support because it feels better for me to do it that way. I'm going to draw that top knee in towards the front of my rib cage, and then I'm going to send it away from me. And that just for me allows that to ease my glute medius. If it feels better for you, you can circle through that hip one direction and the other anything that feels okay stable wise and something that's going to relieve any tension nice and then when you're ready we're going to draw the knees and ankles over towards each other this one i'm going to release that if you have a pillow that's great you're going to take that bolster right up against your pelvis and then from here keeping the spine forward for now we're going to draw that elbow back Draw the shoulder blade towards the middle of the spine and maybe even rest that hand on top of the hip. Elbow may come to the bolster behind you. And this is where we get to accommodate for our bodies as we're coming into a twist. So the option is to stay here, resting your head wherever is comfortable, easing your shoulders into that movement. And again, bringing your head up for support is a great place to be keeping that bolster there to support you option to draw the elbow a little bit further back depending on your range of motion in your shoulder you may still want to have your hand on top of your hip your rib cage the bolster and maybe that arm comes all the way to the earth maybe it never gets there using again that support of the bolster you can shear your knees here we're not trying to um, make anything a particular way so if the top knee like mine draws back that's fine make sure whatever's happening feels comfortable in your body 
and the gaze if that back shoulder is down can come over and away from your knees you of course can take any support you need to in your body here any kind of props available to you getting that deep twist through the spine after all that work through the pelvis Allow the breath to be gentle, to be steady. Stay here for as long as you like. We're going to take the gaze up. We're going to start to bring that back arm towards the bolster, onto the hip, the rib cage, and then gently bring yourself back to rest on your right side. For you, you can roll to the other side if you like. I'm going to take, I'm going to come up and bring myself to my left side so I can face you. Take with you your pillows, softness underneath you. This side may feel very different. So coming all the way down. Once you're down here, if you do need extra softness under that bottom hip or rib cage, please go ahead. And once again, that bolster is snuggling up and, um, behind your pelvis to make sure that if you roll that pelvis back at any point, then you're getting feedback and you notice that, of course, the top hand can support you from rolling forward. And the ankles and knees are on top of each other about a 45 degrees to your pelvis, uh, to your um, spine, sorry. Take a breath in. Exhale it out. And then from here, same thing, other side. Ankles stay towards each other. Inhaling, the knee is coming up. Not so much so that the pelvis is rolling back and that hand can stay on the pelvis to help you. Inhaling up, exhaling down. And this side may be very different from the other. It may be tighter, it may be more fluid, it may feel more challenging or a little more easeful. It may be um, more challenging for you to keep the pelvis more neutral or the opposite way, of course. Inhaling and exhaling, keeping yourself guided by that breath and again as soon as it starts to feel into that glute medius that means that it's getting a little tired take a break when you need to if it starts to feel like it's getting a little choppy that's also the muscles starting to get tired Inhaling and exhaling, you've got another couple. Rest if you need to. Always listening to yourself. That exhale is just as important as the inhale. Coming back to rest and releasing. And as you rest your knees down, you're probably going to feel a relaxation wash through the back of that, um, the back of your pelvis. From here, same stabilization through the pelvis as on the inhale we lift the ankle up and there's that internal rotation but not so much so that we're rolling the hip forward inhaling up exhaling down and that bolster behind you should give you really good feedback to the point where when you realize that you're starting to tip forward that you can notice either from that bolster or from the hand and that hand can also help you not roll forward <clears throat> again that exhale is just as important as the inhale everybody tends to focus on how high they can lift that ankle, but we want the smoothness of the movement. Got another couple here to go. 
And then we're going to put those two together just like we did on the other side. Last one, that foot comes all the way down. And once again, big breath in. Exhale, release. And notice where you were holding tension. From here, same thing. On the inhale, knee comes up this time. Pelvis is steady, not rolling back. And then the ankle comes up. Ankle down on the exhale, then knee down. So it's a little faster. Any previous modification you can take, or this is our new movement. Inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. You might be really feeling into that glute medius here. Again, taking a rest every other one whatever feels good for you. There's no right and wrong here. Keep the breath flowing. Two more, unless you're resting. All the way back down. Take a big breath in and release. From here, we're gonna take that same long twist from the side. So, coming down, keeping that bolster snuggled into your spine and your lower pelvis, we're going to draw that top arm back. And again, any pillow, any heightening of the head that you need, go ahead. And this may be enough for you. You can draw that right shoulder forward and draw the elbow back, resting on your rib cage, on your hip. Maybe that elbow rests on the um, support behind you. And then from here, there's that option of drawing the shoulders open, allowing for the support of that back arm. The gaze can come away from the knees. And of course, the option is there if you have props available to accommodate for your body as you need to. readjusting, always giving yourself permission to shift, to do what feels right for you, steady breaths. staying for as long as you like in that twist and then when you're ready the gaze comes back to center as we bring that back arm towards center hand to the hip to the ribs as we roll ourselves to center here Great place to be, resting here, or we're gonna come from here into relaxation. So bolster or whatever it was that was supporting you can come under the top of your thighs or your knees and resting in relaxation. Whatever feels good for you. And if you have another place that you wanna to go to for relaxation, you can go ahead now. If there's another movement you want to add to your practice until you feel ready to come into relaxation, go ahead. And as you get yourself ready, I'm gonna come up to support. Settling yourself in to your chosen place. Big breath in and exhale, release. 
down. From here, we're gonna take a little tense and release exercise. As we tense our muscles and release them, they're actually more relaxed at the end of that tense and release than they were in the beginning. So I need to take your awareness down into your hands, taking your hands into soft fists. Wherever you are, drawing your shoulders down, gripping your fists as much as you feel comfortable and then tensing from the shoulders all the way through your arms, squeezing or imagining squeezing all the muscles so they're getting firmer, holding the breath, and then on the exhale, release and relax, curling the fingers gently away from the palms of the hands and release. Taking your awareness down into your legs, all the way down through your toes and hips. And on an inhale, you know, imagine or squeeze your hips in towards each other, your glutes towards each other. Allow your legs to be rigid, even curl the toes in or spread the toes out wide, bringing rigidity into all of your muscles of your hips and legs, all the way down through your ankles and feet, the soles of your feet. Hold for as long as you feel you can. And then at the exhale, release and relax. And then take your awareness into your head, your neck, your throat, your face. And on an inhale, squeeze all the muscles of your jaw, the muscles of your face, your shoulders, maybe come up towards your ears, your neck and throat, tense as much or as little as you want to, as you feel comfortable or even imagining that. Hold the breath. And then on the exhale, release and let go. last area here, taking your awareness into your torso, from your shoulders all the way down through your pelvic floor. And then on an inhale, drawing all of your muscles into a hard, tense tightness. Draw your pelvic floor up, your shoulder blades draw down towards your pelvis. You're drawing your waist in, your belly in hardening through the organs of your internal self and then on an exhale release and relax you can stay there or last one taking your whole body on an inhale drawing your muscles into tightness from the tips of your toes and fingers to the crown of your head to your face your torso your hips your shoulders Drawing it in, tensing as much or as little as you like, and on an exhale, release completely. Allowing tension to drain away, soften and dissolve. And allow your breath to release completely as well. As you rest.
these thoughts arise, just allow them to arise and then ebb and flow away. Notice if tension has built up in anywhere within your body, allow that tension to dissolve and release as you rest. Staying here for as long as you like. I'm starting to notice where you're resting and how the support underneath you feels. Drawing your awareness into your breath, bringing more conscious breaths in and out. Starting to bring gentle movements into your body to reawaken. To guide yourself up to a place where you would like to finish your practice or stay where you are. And settling in. Rooting to rise. Hands in a gesture of closing. A big breath in and exhale out. Drawing your chin down towards your chest. And offering yourself thanks for your practice. Offering yourself a breath of gratitude for the time you've taken to practice today. Thank you. Namaste.